Amén. Buenas noches a todos los presentes. Que Dios les bendiga. Vamos a comenzar en esta tarde este culto de alabanza a nuestro Dios con el himno número 32, ¿cierto? En los himnarios que ha proporcionado esta actividad, el, el SIC, el número 32, quien está por Cristo. So we're going to be singing from the Congressional Hymn Book, number 32, Who is on the Lord's Side? If you have the Celebration Hymnal, it's 674. Let's stand and sing together.
Amén. Oramos al Señor. Te damos gracias, oh Padre Celestial, en esta hermosa tarde que tú nos has permitido poder estar en este lugar un día más, dándote la gloria y la honra solamente a ti, oh Dios. Gracias por tu misericordia, gracias por tu bondad, gracias porque, Señor, tú nos has traído hasta este lugar y nos has mantenido con vida, con salud durante ya varios días. Y hemos sido bendecidos grandemente a través de tu palabra, a través de lo que hemos escuchado y hemos aprendido, Señor. Te damos gracias, oh Dios, por, este, por esta hermosa reunión que estamos en esta tarde elevando a tu presencia toda la gloria y toda la honra solamente sea para ti, Señor. Y que nosotros podamos, Señor, seguir honrando, glorificando tu nombre, aprendiendo de ti a través de tu palabra, sabiendo, Señor, que todo lo que tú haces es bueno para nuestras vidas. Bendícenos, ayúdanos, síguenos cuidando, Señor, durante los días que restan. No, no los conocemos, no sabemos lo que viene por delante, pero nuestra confianza, nuestra fe está puesta en ti, oh Dios. Y sabemos, Señor, que tú serás con nosotros, Padre. Bendice todo lo que resta de esta reunión a tu Hijo, que entregará tu palabra, Señor, que podamos atesorarla en nuestros corazones y que tu bendición pueda caer sobre nuestras vidas hoy y siempre, mi Dios. Gracias. Todo lo dejamos en tus manos y te lo pedimos en tu nombre, Jesús. Amén y Amén. Pueden tomar sus asientos. Ahora viene un momento de anuncios. Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. We have a few announcements this evening. Muy buenas noches, amados hermanos. Tenemos unos anuncios en esta noche. Um, tenemos uh, uh, resoluciones y también uh, dos declaraciones. Tenemos las copias aquí adelante para aquellos que desean uh, tenerlas. We have uh, One resolution and two statements up forward here for those we have them in Spanish and English, so uh, feel free to take one to, to study it. Uh, we also have the, the bags, the Congress bags that are for sale uh, with all the things in them. They are $10 and just the bag alone is $5. Tenemos las bolsas del Congreso con todo lo que tiene por dentro. Uh, son $10 y... Uh, sin nada por dentro, solo cinco dólares. Uh, pedimos también, si usted no ha llenado su lista de itinerario, puede pasar allá a la mesa con hermana Sheila. Ahí está la lista para poder uh, dar la información necesaria para su viaje de retorno a, a su país. For all those who uh, have not given their itinerary information over there on the registration table where Sheila is, there's a a sheet there, please uh, uh, fill out the information because we need that to be able to uh, get you transported back to the airport. Um, tam también tenemos a cuatro Kenianos que necesitan uh, regresar al área de Washington, D.C. No sé si todavía consiguieron uh, uh, una ayuda para llevarlos a esa área, uh, pero si está interesado y va a viajar a esa área, por favor nos dejan saber para poder Uh, uh, darles esa información. We have four Kenyans that need a ride to the uh, Washington, D.C. area, so if you are going down there on Thursday, uh, we would appreciate it if, uh, if you have room that you'll be able to take them. The uh, Media Commission was supposed to uh, meet, and uh, I don't know, uh, Hermano David Kiesberg is not here, right? Hermano David tomorrow after lunch. Huh? It's tomorrow after lunch. Tomorrow. El día de mañana después de almuerzo se va a reunir la, la comisión de, um, uh, de comunicación, de, de medio de comunicación. Si usted tiene un ministerio uh, de, de comunicación, puede también, ahí hay una lista, él desea tener su su nombre, su correo, uh, su teléfono, necesita toda su información para uh, ponerse a, a, a ser parte de esa, esa comisión. All those who, who have a, 
a mass media ministry can sign up. There's a sheet on the back table there. There's, there's a few things from Bolivia, but you can uh, sign up and, uh, and be part of that uh, commission with the, with the mass media ministry. Um, those are the announcements uh, this evening. Uh, we have a few more announcements by Pastor Brad. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, concerning the resolutions and statements. Y la, las resoluciones y la, to, um, ¿cómo se dice? El, uh, las declaraciones. Yeah. Uh, we only printed 50 copies of each. Solo imprimimos 50 copias de cada uno. If you would like multiple copies to take back, feel free because we can always print more. Si usted necesita más copias mm. para llevar de vuelta a, a su país, podemos imprimir más. And then one thing that I hope that every one of you uh, can be sure to look at before you leave. Y también hay una cosa que quisiera que todos mm. de ustedes puedan mm. ver antes de irse. Mm. When you go back to the display area, cuando van allá atrás al, al cuarto, al, al foyer donde están todas las mesas y el, uh, el display, ya saben, allá las mesas atrás. Yeah. Uh, if you turn to the left to go out the door across the walkway, si usted uh, saliendo de aquí se va a su, a su izquierda para salir por la puerta de ese lado. Uh, there's a number of uh, uh, brass plaques and Hay so forth. Varias plaquetas mm. que están ahí en la pared. Mm. But right in the center, y en el, en el mm. medio de esas plaquetas, uh, the Dutch uh, people are known for their hand-painted ceramic tiles. Los, uh, los pa Países Bajos mm. son conocidos por su mm. gran arte en, en pintar la cerámica. Mm. And there's a beautiful display of tiles given by the people of the Netherlands. Y hay unas plaquetas ahí muy bellas que fueron dadas por los Países Bajos. Uh, commemorating uh, the birth of the ICCC in uh, Amsterdam. Conmemorando mm. el, el inicio del de Concilio Internacional mm. en Amsterdam. And the uh, memorial is in honor of y el, el memorial está en honor de uh, Dr. Eric Koch, da, el Dr. Eric Koch, who was the first general secretary of the ICCC. Quien fue el primer secretario mm. ejecutivo del Concilio uh, Internacional. And he was in the uh, Dutch legation to China. Y él estuvo en la delegación de los Países Bajos hacia China. Uh, and was persecuted when the communists uh, took over China in 1948. Okay, and it's also in honor of Dr. Carl McIntyre, the first president of the ICCC. Y también está en honor del primer presidente del Concilio Internacional, el Dr. Carl McIntyre. So that would be something worth uh, taking a picture of and uh, at least reading. Uh, pasen ahí, hay un gran valor en, en verlo y leerlo. And just down uh, Haddon Avenue here in Collingswood. Y bajando aquí mm. en la avenida de Haddon en Collingswood. Mm. Uh, there's a cemetery. Hay un cementerio. That has an ICCC section. Que tiene un sector del Concilio Internacional. And Dr. and Mrs. Koch and Dr. and Mrs. McIntyre are buried there. Y ahí están enterrados el, el doctor y, y su señora uh, Kat y también el doctor uh, Carl McIntyre y su señora. And a number of other ICCC leaders. Y también otros líderes del Concilio Internacional. And then uh, finally, uh, we try not to say too much about money. Y finalmente no tratamos de nosotros de hablar mucho de dinero. But as you can imagine, uh, there were many costs associated with this Congress. Pero ustedes se pueden imaginar que hubieron muchos gastos para llevar a cabo este Congreso. And anything you can give to help would be greatly appreciated. Y cualquier monto que usted pueda dar más será a, a grandemente apreciado. And when you go back to your home countries, y cuando regresen a sus países de donde vinieron, 
Ahora ustedes también pueden donar usando la página web del Concilio. And so I know many of you uh, have many financial struggles. Yo sé que muchos de ustedes tienen uh, unas, unas luchas financieras. But even small gifts uh, will be a big help. Pero aunque sean uh, ofrendas pequeñas, será de gran ayuda. And we thank you uh, so very much even for the offerings that have been given so far this week. Y también week. les agradecemos por las ofrendas que han dado estando aquí estos días. Thank you very much. Gracias. Amen. Vamos a recoger la ofrenda. Según el programa, dice Marianne Clark está a cargo de la ofrenda. Por favor, que pase. Acá están los, los encargados de la ofrenda. Bien, si no, vamos a pedirle a voluntarios que pasen por acá para que podamos recoger la ofrenda. Hermanos, amén, que Dios les bendiga. Que pasen por acá, aquí están los ofrenderos, ¿cierto? Dios bendice, cierto, al dador alegre. Pastor Juan Hoyos, por favor, ore por la ofrenda que ha sido recogida. ¿Sí? Ahí. Amén.
Amén. La familia Matamala tiene un momento especial. Alabamos y adoramos a nuestro precioso Dios porque Él es digno de toda adoración. God is worthy of all our worship and glorify. La alabanza tiene por título Señor, déjame servir. Y muestra cómo la gente está en este mundo necesitando de un Salvador. Los niños están desamparados sin conocer de Él. Y este himno es nuestra oración. These praises are pray. Señor, déjame hablarles de ellos. Señor, dame un lugar donde servir. Señor, muéstrame una tarea para que nosotros podamos hacerla. Señor, enséñanos a poder hacer tu voluntad. Y esa es la, la alabanza que hoy vamos a entonar como familia. Otra vez, ahora sí. 
A Jehová, nuestro Dios, serviremos y a su voz obedeceremos. Josué 24, 24. The Lord our God will we serve and his voice will we obey. Joshua 24, 24. Amén. Amén. Dios bendiga, ¿cierto? A la familia Matamala. Vamos a escuchar el sermón en este momento por el pastor Yap Kim Sin. Que Dios bendiga, ¿cierto? Y podamos estar atentos a lo que Dios nos va a hablar en esta tarde a través de su palabra. The topic assigned to me is the gods of the nations are idols. The psalmist states in Psalm 96 verses 4 to 5, For the Lord is great, greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. I have three, three points to share with you this evening. Point one, the many false gods in biblical times. Point two, the modern or the false gods in modern times. And number three, the command to trust in the true and living God of the Bible. Firstly, the many false gods in biblical times. I'll run through quickly. Estoreth, also called Esta. Estoreth is plural. This is a goddess of the Canaanites connected with fertility and maternity. Worship of Estoreth is was strong at Sidon. She was sometimes called a consort or a companion of Baal. King Solomon, influenced by his foreign wives, fell into Estoreth worship, which of course led to his downfall. Next, Baal, sometimes called Baal the supreme god among the Canaanites, worshipped in many forms, but often as sun god or storm god. He was a fertility god. Rites uh, involved with Baal worship included cult, prostitution, and sometimes human sacrifice. A famous showdown occurred between, uh, between the prophets of Baal and the prophet Elijah at Mount Carmel, 1 Kings 17. Uh, in the book of Judges, we note that the worshipping of Baal was a recurring temptation uh, for the people of Israel. Next, Chemosh, the subduer, the national god of the Moabites, also worshipped by the Ammonites. And rites involving this god were said to be cruel and may have involved human sacrifices. Solomon erected an altar to Chemosh, uh, south of Mount of Olives, outside Jerusalem, on the hill called Hill of Corruption, 2 Kings 23. Next, Dagon. This God of the Philistines has a body of a fish and a human head and hands in its statues. Uh, Dagon was a god of water and grain. In 1 Samuel 15, or in, rather in 1 Samuel 5, after the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant, they placed the Ark in their temple next to Dagon. The next day, Dagon's statue was toppled to the floor. 
they set it up, right? And the next morning, it was again on the floor with his, with his head and hands broken off. Our God is greater than Dagon. <laughs> and next, Egyptian gods. Ancient Egypt had more than 40 false gods, although none are mentioned in the Bible by name. They included Ra, creator sun god, Isis, goddess of magic, Osiris, lord of the uh, afterlife, Thoth, god of wisdom and the moon, Horus, god of sun. Strangely though, the Hebrews were not tempted by these gods during their years of captivity in Egypt. The, the, the records, the 10 plagues recorded in Exodus 7 to 11 were humiliations of the 10 specific Egyptian gods. Next, golden calves occur twice in the Bible. First, at the foot of Mount Sinai, fashioned by Aaron. And second, in the reign of King Jeroboam, 1 Kings 12. And in both instances, the idols were physical representations of God and of course judged by God as sin because he commanded that no image, images of him should be made, Exodus 20. Next, Marduk, this god of the Babylonians, associated with fertility and vegetation. Now, confusion among uh, 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 Mesopotamian uh, gods is common because Marduk had 50 names, including Bel, also worshipped by the Assyrians and Persians. Lastly, Milcom, national god of the Ammonites, associated with divination, seeking knowledge of the future through occult means. Child sacrifice was sometimes connected with Milcom. He was among the false god worshipped by Solomon at the close of his reign. Milcom, also known as Moloch, Molech, Molech, variation of the same false god. The false gods in biblical times, the modern or the, the present day false god, the false god in modern times, point two. As in ancient times, there are still many false gods today. And all false gods have something in common. What's that? They are all creation of man. All false gods, both ancient and modern, are creation of man's imagination in an attempt to explain the unexplained and to try to bring meaning and purpose to life on earth. I submit to you, idolatry is a life and well today. Unlike in biblical times where idols were man-made statues and such, today's idols take different forms. I want to suggest to you at least three common kinds of idols we can make or may have made for ourselves today. First, the idol of materialism. We often hear the word materialism both in Christian and non-Christian circles. In biblical terms, it means loving the world more than God. 1 John 2.15 tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. The world there is a system of thought. It's not the physical things, but a mentality. We can use things appreciate things, cherish things, but always with an eye on our God who is the creator and giver of all good things. 
The moment we take our eyes off this true and living God of the Bible and focus on things and things only, we have made gods or idols of these things. We are to love God and use things. But sometimes we love things and use gods. Our modern society, for instance, particularly in the advertising strategy, constantly bombard us with this one message. If you have this, you have that, it will make you happy. That extra cash, that better car, that bigger TV, that larger house, nicer dress, better looking body, more hair on the head, and more. There are two things at least wrong with this message. Firstly, as God's people, our priority is not happiness, but holiness. Our desire is not for what makes us happy, but rather what makes God happy. And secondly, things can never make us genuinely happy. They may give us an illusion of happiness for a while. And then after that, we are out looking for more. Things never satisfy. They can only whet our appetite for more. Only God, only Jesus truly satisfies. As our desire grows, very often our love for God diminishes. diminishes. And John puts it this way in 1 John 2, 16 to 17. Even all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Let us be aware of the idol of materialism. Second, the idol of secularism. The word secular is a neutral word. It can be used in a good sense. When a society is governed as a secular state, it means it is governed without favor given to any religious faith. No religion is adopted as a state religion. And all uh, adherents of other religions are also accorded the same rights and privileges. So it is in this sense that a country like Singapore, maybe even a country like India, are considered secular. Religion is kept separate from politics. In that regard, maybe USA is the same. <laughs> But secularism had, has also a bad sense. It means that God has no part in the individual. A secular person is therefore the opposite of a godly person. It is not that a secular person does not believe in God. He may, but he does not allow his belief to affect his life. At best, God is in his life, the God who is in his life is an absentee God. God is totally irrelevant to the way he lives his life. So the, the secular man or woman finds all his or her needs met apart from God. Apart from God. We make an idol out of secularism when we begin to trust man and the things of this world more than we trust God. And this is one uh, by us. Isaiah 31 verse 1, for example, says this, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and, and stay on horses and trust in chariots because there are many 
And in the horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. We rely on horses, chariots, horsemen, instead of God. We rely on the strength of men, the multitude of his technology, the efficiency of his management, the power of his money. In a way, such an attitude is an extension of the materialist, a materialistic outlook, the idol of materialism. The idol of materialism gives birth to the idol of secularism. We love things, then we grow to depend on them. We no longer love God, neither do we look up to Him. So we make gods out of our career, our position, our abilities. We look to science, modern science, a modern medicine, powerful and influential people, to everything and everybody except to God. We have made idols for ourselves. Have you? Have I? Third, the idol of superstition. When we love things more than we love God, we make them idols. When we trust things more than we trust God, we make them idols. When we fear things more than we fear God, we also make them idols. Ironically, as our society becomes more and more affluent, more and more sophisticated, our society has also become more and more superstitious. People are looking into things like horoscopes, uh, good luck charms, uh, uh, almonds, uh, and things like feng shui. How many of you read horoscopes? I hope not. <laughs> the destiny of your life and my life does not depend on the location of the stars. The destiny of your life and my life is dependent on the creator of those stars. So therefore, horoscope is actually, in my mind, horoscope. Don't get involved. I'm going to elaborate a, lot, a little bit more on this superstition called feng shui. Uh, this is very oriental, but give me some time, I'll explain. Feng shui is the Chinese word for wind and water. Feng shui, feng wind, shui, water. It's the idea that buildings and landscapes are conduits for certain winds of energy. Adherents of this belief, uh, they believe that energy can be channeled, can be directed by the shape of a building and its room. Students of feng shui examine the shape of the passageways, the colors of the room. And if occupants get feng shui, the, the energy and the wind correct, they believe success is inevitable. Do you know that the term has now entered into the American vernacular according to LA Times? Prospective home buyers in California actually hire feng shui consultants to help them make the right choice. Some houses even come with a feng shui contingency in the contract. Some putting their homes on the market saw home workers, uh, homeowners have their property pre-certified by feng shui inspector. And this craze is no longer now limited to California. Many years ago, an issue of Time magazine described the growing influence of feng shui in corporate America. Real estate developers and corporations like Universal Studios, Merrill Lynch, etc., they have hired these kind of consultants to help them improve their energy flow. An extreme example is the advice given that of Mitch Lancel, 
city manager of Gardena, uh, California. On the advice of his intercultural consultant, he rearranged his books, eliminated one of his office doors, and he always faces the northeast during important calls. Apparently, these people are desperate to believe in something. And that's precisely the point. G.K. Chesterton once remarked, when a man stops believing in God, he doesn't stop believing. He doesn't believe in nothing. Rather, he will believe in anything. In other words, the opposite of Christianity is not atheism. It is superstition, blind faith in any fad that happens along the way. Some such beliefs may appear harmless, but the truth is this. They generate fear in those who believe in them. To fear the forces of the supernatural more than we fear God is making gods out of them. The Lord Jesus told us, told his disciples rather, and also us, I believe, in Luke 12, 4 to 5. As I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more than uh, no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he had killed had power to cast you into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. The Lord Jesus is saying that we should know who to fear, who to revere, who to worship. It is none other the God of the Bible. For it is he who has the ultimate power over heaven and hell. We should not fear man and the forces of the devil, for no one can stand up to the true and living God of the Bible. To allow ourselves to be afraid of the so-called gods or spirits or any superstitious fears is to make idols out of them. There is only one true and living God of the Bible. And we, as the redeemed people of God, purchased by the blood of Jesus, we have only one allegiance. We are not to love anything, trust anything, or fear anything more than Yahweh, the God of the Bible. Third, the command to trust in God. Psalm 119, verses 9 to 11. What should we, the people of God, who know the true and living God, do in the face of this utter importance of the, the idols? What should we do as we face these idols, modern-day idols? According, according to Psalm 115, uh, 5, verses 9 to 11, we are to trust in this true and living God who is the creator of heaven and earth and also the sustainer of heaven and earth. Why should we trust God? It is because, according to the psalmist here, he is our true help and shield. Help and shield. The idols can offer nothing. Our living God is the one who helps us in our weakness. And he is the one who shields us from our foes, our help, and our shield. You know, there's a lot of repetition, actually, in this psalm. Verses 9 to 11 are almost entirely repetition. They repeat the idea of trusting God three times, right? Calling first on the house of Israel, trust God. House of Aaron, the priest, trust God. And all who fear God, trust him. Three times. If God tells us sometime, uh, something once, we should listen carefully because he is God. If he says something twice, we should pay the strictest attention. If he repeats what he has to tell us 
three times. I suggest we drop everything else we are doing and give our full attention to study, to ponder, to commit to memory, to meditate and joyfully obey what he has said. And in this case, we should, we must trust in the Lord. Not other things that can so easily come into our lives and take the place of God. Do you trust God? Do I trust God? We say we do. I say I do. But do we really, really trust Him? A man is walking along a narrow path and not paying attention to where he was going, he slipped over the edge of a cliff. And as he fell, he grabbed a branch growing from the side of the cliff. And realizing that he could not hang on for long, he called out for help. Man, is anybody up there? Voice, I'm here. Man, who's that? Voice, the Lord. Man, Lord, help me. Voice, do you trust me? Man, I trust you completely, Lord. Voice, great. Let go of the branch. Man, what? Voice, I said let go of the branch. Man, after a long pause, is there anybody else up there? We say we trust God. I say I trust God. When the push comes to shove, do you? Do I trust him? What does, what does it take to have faith in God? To trust him? What settles really for me is what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? The argument from the greatest to the least. Paul says, God did not hold back his son. And and because he has given us his son already, surely he would not withhold from you and me all those things that we need. I can trust God who gave his only begotten son Jesus to settle my sins debt, reconcile me to himself, adopted me as his child, and promised me eternal life with him. I can trust the Lord who did not withhold Jesus to suffer and die on the cross as my substitute and to endure God's anger in my place and to give freely to me all things that I need. I can trust our Heavenly Father who loves me, rescues me from eternal damnation, provides me an, an eternal home and inheritance. I can trust the God who has given me his very best. When doubts and fears assail, I look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. When I fear my faith in God will fail, as a hymn writer so eloquently puts it, Christ will hold me fast. Christ will hold me fast. He will not let me go. Raise your faith. Is it truly in the Lord or in the idols that I've just mentioned? By the way, faith, F-A-I-T-H, is an acronym I use to remind myself. Forsaking all, I trust him. Can you think of at least three things now? Three things that you are trusting God for? 
Can you think of at least three things? If not, your trust may be not in the God of the Bible, but in your resources, your connections, your skills, your money, your people connections, your power, etc. When we trust God as we should, as His redeemed people, our God gets the glory. He gets the credit. Our theme, declare His glory among the nations. May I submit to you, one of the ways we declare His glory among the nations is when you and I, as His beloved people, truly, genuinely trust Him. When we, the people of God, do not just talk the talk, but also walk the talk, God gets the credit. He becomes famous. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, our Savior, we approach you as needy people, as helpless people. Please help us to truly, genuinely, unreservedly put our faith in you. Only you, Lord, nothing more, nothing less, and nobody else. And like the, the man who brought his demon-possessed child to Jesus, we cry out, we believe, I believe, help, help me in my unbelief, help us in our unbelief. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior. And all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, Pastor Yap, for bringing God's word to us this evening and uh, the uh, statement that we find in Psalm 96 that the gods of the nations are idols, but we have the one true and living God who created all things. I uh, <coughs> see that we have a uh, code up on the wall and I... Uh, I'm just getting into some of this technology, but I think if you scan that, it'll take you somewhere on your computer that you may want to go. So, uh, I would like uh, to ask uh, Reverend Juan Hoyos from Iquitos, Peru, to close in, in prayer. Uh, Pastor Hoyos. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, we have one more day to go. It's hard to believe that the Congress is drawing uh, to an end, but we've greatly enjoyed the fellowship and uh, the love that we can have uh, united on the truth of, of God's word.
that you are dismissed.